Senator Biden, it's nice to have you here as the youngest member of the Senate, the one, therefore, who may expect the longest career there. I wonder if you'd say to us, <laughs> since it's clear that you're not corrupt and you got elected, why should people think that the system produces corrupt results when there you are? Well, I'm not sure you should assume I'm not corrupt, but I thank you for that, though. The system does produce corruption, and in, in, I think implicit in the system is corruption, when in fact, whether or not you can run for public office, and it costs a great deal of money to run for the United States Senate, even from a small state like Delaware, uh, you have to go to those people who have money, and they always want something. It's the most degrading experience in the world to have to go out and ask for money because you know that unless you accidentally agree with the position taken by the person or group that has the money, that you run the risk of deciding whether or not you're going to prostitute yourself to give the answer you know they want to hear in order to get funded to run for that office. And those who aren't rich tend to move towards people who have ideas that, uh, that can raise a lot of money. It's degrading to have to go out and know that that is your only source of money. When the man you're talking to, for example, knows that, in fact, you're the only, he's the only means by which you can even begin to run for office, well, I think you missed the point, or else I haven't made the point properly. If, in fact, you know that the only way you can raise any money to get to run for public office is to go to vested interest groups, then, in fact, you're put in the position that you have to begin to wonder whether or not you prostitute the ideas that you have about government in order to get the money to begin to run. I went to the big guys for the money. I was ready to prostitute myself in the, man in the manner in which I talk about it. But what happened was they said, come back when you're 40, son. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true and international effort to pressure. You know, if I can digress for just a second, last night I was on the television, on uh, television, I was on the telephone. There you go, Tim, thank you. Thank you, pal. AFL-CIO State President. And Jeff Isaacson, United Brotherhood of Carpenters, you've, and uh, Don Finn, IBW, uh, and, uh, and Robert Reiter, Reiter, R-E-I-T-E-R, Reiter. When you build a charging station, it's like back in the day when my grandpa worked for the Maryland Canola Company back in the turn of the, in the 19, 1920 in that area. They went from state to state convincing people that they put, allowed them to put 20,000 gallons of gasoline under the ground. They didn't want them around. Uh, of the, uh, Don Harmon, State Senator Laura Murphy, State Rep. Uh, um, Martin Mo uh, Mo Moylan, and uh, we got great labor leaders here too. Tim, well, where's Tim? Rock and I think it's a right for people that bad at health care. Of, uh, that will enhance our underlying effort to accommodate the Russian oligarchs uh, and make sure we take their, take their, their ill-begotten gains. <laughs> We're going to accommodate them. <laughs> We're going to seize their yachts, their luxury homes, and other ill-begotten gains of Putin's kleptocracy, uh, yeah, kleptocracy, and klep the guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> but these are bad guys.